Alex, what's physics really all about? Well, there are two big ideas in physics, and they are energy and forces. And the first one we need to know about is energy. So what do we know about energy? Well, let's think about it. There are lots of different types of energy, and already I can see four different types in this room. Can you spot them? Yeah. There's sound, light, heat, and electricity. Correct. And there's two big groups of energy, each with a special name. I know that too. There's kinetic energy and potential energy. Hey, that's right. But do you know the difference? No, not clue. Well, listen up. If energy is moving, then we say it has kinetic energy. I'm not sure I get that. Well, think of a hammer hitting a nail. The hammer is moving and does work on the nail by driving it into a wall. Therefore, we say the hammer has kinetic energy. So, kinetic energy is the energy of movement. That's right. But if the energy is stored for use in the future, then it's called potential energy. So, energy stored for future use is potential energy because it has the potential for being used as energy, just like energy stored in a battery. Exactly. Now, let's have a look at these examples and see if we can work out whether they're kinetic or potential energy. So, how about sound? Sound. OK. Well, the speaker makes a sound and the sound travels to my ear, which means it's moving and it's happening now. So, it's kinetic energy? Correct. OK. Um, light. Ah. Well, again, if I can see it, then the light has to be travelling to my eye. So it's moving and it's happening now, so it's kinetic. You're good. OK, um, thermal energy. Thermal energy? Oh, don't worry. That's a posh word for heat. Oh, OK. So if something's hot and I can feel the heat, then that means it's being transferred from the hot thing to me. So it's kinetic? Mm, good again. OK, um, electricity. Mm. The electricity moves along wires, so it's kinetic energy. Hmm, hey, I'm impressed. OK, well, let's take a look at this car moving along. What sort of energy does it have? The same as all moving objects. Kinetic energy. Hmm, you're good at this. OK, time for a few harder ones. If I take out this elastic band and stretch it, what type of energy does the elastic band have? Easy. It's got energy stored waiting to be used, so it's potential energy. That's right, the potential to be flicked at you. <laughs> Missed. <laughs> OK, last example. Let's take a look at this water dam. What type of energy does the water behind the dam have? None. Wrong. It has gravitational potential energy. When the dam opens, gravity pulls the water down and it starts to move. At which point? the potential energy turns into kinetic energy. Exactly. See, that's the really important thing about energy. If we're going to make use of it, then we need to transfer it from one type to another, from kinetic to potential. Or potential to kinetic. Yep. And remember, energy isn't used up. It's just transferred. Take this light bulb, for example. It takes electrical energy. And transfers it into light and heat. Correct. Plants take light energy from the sun, turn it into potential energy in the form of food, animals take the potential energy, eat it, and turn it into heat, movement, electricity, and sound. Whenever energy is transferred, it is always conserved. Conserved? That means that you get the same amount of energy out of a transfer as you put in. It might not be useful energy, but it will come out. For example, if you put 100 joules of electrical energy into a television set every second, then you get 100 joules of energy out every second. How? Well, we want sound and light to come out of the TV, but heat will also be produced as a byproduct. So if we add the amount of light, heat and sound energy produced, it will all add up to 100 joules per second, the same amount as the 100 joules per second that we put in. Exactly, but 
this means that some of the useful energy would have gone down. Another way of saying this is that the energy has dissipated. So if some of the energy has dissipated as heat, then that means that it didn't get used to make light or sound. That's right. And sometimes energy transfers when we don't want it to. For example, hot objects transfer their heat into their surroundings and cool down. Heat energy travels in four different ways. Can you remember what they are? I think so. Conduction, convection, evaporation and radiation. That's right. Conduction happens in solids because the particles cannot move from their spot. Look. When the particles get hot, they vibrate. And as they get hotter, they vibrate even more, making the particles next to them vibrate too. This passes the vibrations along the solid. When they rub together, because of friction, they create heat. This is how thermal energy flows through the solid. Clever. So, what about convection? Convection is how thermal energy travels through liquids and gases. You see, when the liquids and gases get hotter, their particles move about and so the matter expands. Because it expands, it becomes less dense than their surroundings, which causes it to rise up. Cold matter comes down to replace the hot matter, and so convection currents are set up. Oh, just like my lava lamp. Hmm. So, what about evaporation? Well, when heat travels by evaporation, it is because liquid is absorbing heat energy from its surroundings and using it to turn itself into a gas. OK, last one, radiation. Radiation is the only method that does not involve particles. It's just thermal energy travelling as a wave independently. So radiation consists of waves of thermal energy? Yes. Hot surfaces emit lots of these waves as they cool down. Some colours are better at emitting radiation than others. Like black, for instance. It's very good at absorbing thermal energy and very good at emitting it. Which is why black things heat up in the sunshine. Exactly. Whereas colours like silver are very bad at absorbing thermal energy because they reflect it, making them very poor at giving it out. Which is why silver things don't heat up in the sunshine. That's right. OK, let's put all this together and imagine we had something that we wanted to keep nice and hot. Like... a cup of tea. Perfect. If we're going to insulate our cup of tea and stop it from cooling down, we need to prevent heat loss. So, we have to prevent... Conduction, convection, evaporation, radiation. <laughs> you have been paying attention. OK, to cut down conduction, we need to make small air pockets around the tea. Because air is a poor conductor. To cut down convection, we need to trap the air and stop it from circulating. To cut down evaporation, we need to make sure the hot liquid of the tea isn't exposed to the air. To cut down radiation, we need to make sure the inside of our container is silver and not black. So, what do you think we should use to insulate our cup of tea? Well, putting together all the things that we want, I would say that the perfect container would be a vacuum flask. Spot on. OK, let's take a closer look at the vacuum flask. Examiners love asking questions about it. It's such a good exam subject. What do you mean? Well, because it tests our knowledge of heat energy and how it travels. The container has a vacuum in it. This is an area with no particles whatsoever, so you can't get conduction, convection or evaporation. The inside is silvered to prevent radiation with a stopper to prevent evaporation and convection. Oh, it's a clever little design and a good exam question, so learn it. I will, in a minute. Why not now? Because my tea's getting cold.